Hey, what's up guys? The Blix here again. Welcome back to Men of War Soul Squad 2 and Rob's Realism Mod. Super excited to be back with another battle. And let me tell you, friends, this one is going to be absolutely insane. I have been working on this battle for the last five to six hours, so I'm really excited to finally get to play it. Um, I have no idea who's going to win this one. I've made it even to try and make it as exciting for everyone out there watching. Because if you know who's going to win it, then it's not as exciting. Unless it's a highly historical battle, which of course means that there should be logically a historical outcome. And if you know your history, then you're probably already going to know who wins. This, however, is based on a historical battle or more of an historical period during World War II, namely the Ardennes Offensive, also known as the Battle of the Bulge. But this could be any of the battles during the Allied Counteroffensive, uh, sometime around the Battle of Bastogne. Um, and I am extremely excited to get this one going. Everyone has been asking me for some more Battle of Bulge videos, so I thought, why not? And usually, we always have, when it comes to the Americans and Germans, uh, we usually um, bank the Germans' attack. And I haven't seen an American attack in a while, so I thought it'd be really cool to recreate a battle from the later stages of the um, of the Ardennes Offensive, when the Allies sort of went on the defense and then counteroffensive. So, super excited to see how this one's going to go. The German defenders today are soldiers from the uh, first SS Panzergrenadier Division, which is the uh, Leibstandarte Adolf Hitler, LSSAH. So we're super excited to see how these guys are going to do. We have some troops from the 101st and also troops from the, well, whatever, I, I'm not entirely sure uh, which infantry division, you know, standard army, U.S. infantry division that would take part of this. Could be an armored division too, of course. Um, but they've got their really cool great coats that I don't think we've used before in a video, so I'm super excited. This is the town they need to capture. It's not Foy, it's a little too big for Foy, but it could be a more major city nearby, and the Germans are going to try and hold it. It is layered like a bloody cake with defenses, and there will be reinforcements. And if there's a rail road or railway running down the center then there will most likely be a little surprise you know how i like my my videos like a bloody kinder egg so um hopefully that'll be appreciated as well but it's going to be as i said an insane battle and if you follow me on snapchat you already knew what today's video would be so you've already already got your popcorn and your and your little uh blankets or whatever you guys wear or have when you watch my videos what do you guys let, let, let me know in the comment section is there something is there a food or a drink or a snack that you prepare before you watch a video or anything on youtube um but let me know it'd be be fun to know before i used to like uh warm up noodles and you know make like beef noodles like the quick ramen ones with and drink like coke with it and, and just sit there and like <laughs> slurp like an idiot anyway um that was a while ago but uh, without further ado really i think we can start this one off don't forget to follow me on snapchat and instagram all the links and usernames is in the description box below <sighs> hit me up with some more suggestions on snapchat i have been receiving a lot of as i said battle of bulge suggestions so here we are this took me quite some time making but i'm just super excited to get this one going it's going to be a good old german line defense during the Arden Offensive, and oh boy, am I excited to finally see my work in action. So without further ado, let's click start. Let's enjoy it. Okay, so just outside the city itself, we have troops from the US Ar uh, Armored Division. We have some troops laying down here. We can, they're all ready. They're just, I guess, waiting for the signals now. This is about a platoon worth of men, and this would make it about two platoons in total, which is a pretty decent size for, for, uh, for an area this big. We have two mortars coming up, getting ready. Go, go, go! Move! Everything is timed to precise accuracy here. Battles like these weren't obviously made overnight plan these for days like a major offensive and many battles were kind of very ad hoc whereas obviously you'd be just meeting enemy forces and you'd be battling it out and then the battle plans were named mainly for like major assaults and defenses and stuff like that during more calm times or when you wanted to strategically take an area that's when you would really start skizzing on a few battle plans but jeez i think U.S. Artillery is bringing your coffee, Jerry. See if they can score some good hits. Oh, nice. 
That one hit right in the trench. Right, boys, that's a fire mission. I think the assault is about to commence. But as I was saying, many of the battles were skirmishes and... Or most of the, the, the engagements were, were skirmishes that weren't exactly entirely planned out in, in large scale. Um, in large scales or, or, or whatever you want to call it. You know, we're talking regiment division size, you know, action here. Um, most of it was just, you know, company and battalion movements that the uh, not so overly senior officers had to um, or could, you know, create themselves where you didn't need brigadier generals telling people what to do, you know. You can make m minor movements capturing farms and roads and, uh, you know, hills and whatnot. Just you know, establishing yourself in a in a in a good position where you give a unit the highest chance of survivability and the best defense. But many battles, many of the major battles during the say Battle of Bulge, for an example, were obviously planned for days and, and stuff, coordinated with division size units, we're talking tens of thousands of men, making movements over several days. Anyway, the U.S. attack is on the way here. That's for sure. Let's uh, focus on this battle in question. Sherman's moving up. We have an EC-8 over here in the center. The preliminary artillery bombardment did some nice damage to the trenches themselves and some of the front positions here, but... The Germans were quick to uh, pop back into action and uh, start with, uh, trying to hold back this U.S. attack. Look at that. I love the pack. It's one of the best-looking AT guns, in my opinion. It's such a classic. It's an icon, you know? Boom. And that EC-8 is still standing, despite taking some side hits from this pack 40. There we go. Right down the center. I think that's going to be the end of that one. The attack is stretching throughout the entire front here. I think they're going to need reinforcements. A whole U.S. company has committed to the assault now. we got mortars back here supporting. Doom. Oh, big explosion. Must have been one of the U.S. tanks. Look at all the bullet impacts in the snow. That looks fantastic. Love that white uh, bullet whiz. This is so cool. Panzers and uh, Stugs up front still holding. Most of these trenches are still occupied by plenty of German soldiers. That MG42 is definitely not giving the American attackers a break anytime soon. But it does differ from side to side here. The right side right German side, to be more precise, is very, very, very battle-worn. And you can see American soldiers among the trees. Nice Panzerfaust shot hit the side of that EC-8. And I think it took out the tracks. Really cool to see that and catch that on camera, so to speak. And you see the, the soldiers here, the great coat infantry, wearing those thick winter coats, just as the Germans are, moving up here on the trench. And you can kind of, like, they're hard to see but they're only more visible when they move. Some G43 return fire. How's it looking here on the left side? Let's swap the plank. This is a very, very major battle. This would probably, if this was during the Battle of Bulge, this would probably be the most major battle, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, we got a nice M18 Hellcat rolling in. 
Well, that's nice to see. This is a cool screenshot in general. The smoke and the fire. This trench has been more or less cleared out. There's a few soldiers remaining. I do believe we have a German Schafschütze sniper waiting patiently in the trench. How's the center looking? Wow, a Panzer Shrek trying to put, an, put a rocket on that Hellcat, but it missed. That was a direct hit, and I think that Hellcat's gonna go down from it. Germans and infantry is moving up. The mortars have moved up as well. I'm gonna grab two soldiers and crew that abandoned mortar. It's not destroyed and it's probably not really abandoned, but I think the crew must have been shot dead, so we're gonna get back on it. Look at that massive assault. The American left is looking very promising right now. They're starting to capture this ridge which gives them a small sort of advantage over the the remaining parts of the city. Uh, or a minor advantage, really. It's, it's sort of a high ground, which can be very useful. And a lot of U.S. armor seems to be going up here. It's going to get very tight soon, as a lot of urban fighting will ensue. And it's going to get extremely, extremely bloody. We can look at, at it from the German perspective. And they have no idea what's coming over that hill. Look at that Panzerstrike. I love the Panzerstrike. It's just a menace. It is such an evil bazooka. It looks really evil, too, with that shield on it. So massive. I remember it from um, Saving Private Ryan. There's one man with it. Does he shoot at a soldier up close or something? I can't remember. But I remember a scene including it. Yeah, lots of... U.S. armor moving up here. Is this Panzer IV down? I do hope so for the Americans. I think it might have been disabled. Oh, jeez. An explosion like that definitely creates a moment of silence on the battlefield before it all just kicks off again. Look at those high, tall smoke pillars starting to climb there over the horizon. We got a Flak 88 in the center here. Which will be uh, getting a good look at most of the allied armor moving up. The uh, Sturmgeschütz here on the right side has been knocked out. Those minor freezes you get at times isn't exactly lag. It means that there are plenty of scripts coming into action. It's pretty common. Here on the American right, which would be the German left, US troops are finally starting to capture the hill, more or less. And we have some airborne soldiers here as well from the 101st. Very cool. Probably the 506th or something like that. Cool, indeed. Two German tanks here in this on the street itself. Pretty good position, flanks are covered, so it's in the open, but not so much if you think about it. So some of the positions that might be considered bad at a first glance aren't always as bad as you think. But uh, that wasn't gonna save that uh, Stug. It's uh, down for good. Huge explosion. Flak AD, it's going nuts over there. We have a, a Jagd Panzer, a Jagd Tiger, I believe is the uh, nickname for it, of course. The Americans aren't really able to get too much ground on this side. They're they're getting bogged down by the flak, a pack, and a uh, another Panzer IV back here. And oh, that is a bloody fucking tiger coming in, supported by infantry. We have a king tiger in the center, and another tiger on the left. Well, you would expect there to be some heavy SS armor during, of course, the Arden counteroffensive, and especially near the. First SS Panzer Grenadier Regiment or Division. Leibstand Arte Adelfutter. Yes. L S S A H. Classic. I think that Flak 88 is down though. That was a good hit. 
At least the crew is. Let's see if... No, they're gonna crew it again. Cool, get it back in action. We have a slugger back here in M36. More armor moving up. We have a... I thought I, thought I saw a Sherman 105 here too. This is just a graveyard right now. You continue here, you're gonna get shot up. I mean, there. this is just starting to be a German collection of allied tanks. But here we have a, a promising hill. Two, what seems to be two M36s and an M10 Achilles. Or no, sorry, a Wolverine. Um, in a pretty cool position. So I think, I think they're gonna stay frosted there for a second. And not move that much. Some German infantry kind of counterattacking. Now they feel a little cocky that they've got a, a King Tiger here in the center holding it down, but uh, it's in a rather, I don't know, dangerous position because the uh, U.S. infantry with all their AT and whatnot is definitely going to give it a hard time, but well, we'll, we'll have to find out. I'm not going to speak for the battle itself. The train station is starting to take some serious fire. Most of the defenders are killed and or under heavy fire. Once you know that Tiger fires, something's gonna hurt on the other side of that round. So, or the other side of that barrel, rather, so. Jeez. This is a slaughterhouse. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. This here is not good for the Allies. If I were them, I'd try and somehow come around this, or like this one's doing, but I, I don't know. There's some. It's not enough cover. And how many infantrymen did not just die with that explosion? Here, all that debris and all that metal going down. Here's one that got kind of far, probably disabled by the German infantry here. We got a tiger on the high ground up here too. This is an excellent firing position. What a what a tiger way to position yourself, huh? How cool does this not look? This is a fantastic scene. Do you see that bullet was bullet impact right here? This is sexy. I don't care if that sounds corny. This is this is really cool. Just this view like this, I like it. I like it a lot. And I want to try and get that tiger firing. That would just be the cherry on top. Well, tiger just got hit. Look at that freaking turret turn. They're looking for some targets. It's cool to watch the battle kind of progress from one point of view, a static point of view. See all those little explosions. Tiger keeps getting hit, but it doesn't really seem to um, think all too much about it. There's a lot of allied tanks here today joining us in this crazy fight. Let me tell you that much. And uh, two Shermans are kind of moving over the hill now. We have more Shermans moving up there. Look at them, they're, they're charging down like bloody cavalry, armored cavalry. I don't think we're gonna get a good Tiger. Bloody Fritz. Holy, that Panzerschreck right there caused that huge explosion. This German defense is groundbreaking. I, I don't know what to call it. It's just, it's scary. That's what it is. And their numbers are so, so, so much smaller than the Americans, but the positioning, the, the quality of arms, and I'm not saying that the Americans have any bad equipment, not at all, but just that this is a very, 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 very bad spot to be in if you're attacking American because well, it's just a... Frankly, it's a really shitty spot. The Germans are very well dug in. They have very good positions, but... It would be a lie to say that the uh, Germans haven't been losing out a lot of troops. See, that ECH should just put a big old round in the side of that Tiger, and I guarantee you it'll knock it out. Choo-choo! 
<laughs> well, I believe this is a train filled with SS soldiers. Well, that's... Well, that's kind of cool. We got to get him that. Getting over this kind of ridge, I, I don't know how possible or impossible it's going to be. But man, the Allies have had plenty of tanks. And I, they still have a lot of active tanks here. Can you move? Let me ask you. Can you move? Oh, you can move, boy. Oh, boy, you can move. Well, then, uh, I just wanted to see. So I'm going to let you guys sit tight for a second. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think it might be wise to just... Maybe try and actually move, though, because otherwise... Well, let's just put it this way. Nothing's going to happen otherwise. So I am going to go ahead and ask you just gently to move. And infantry is definitely needed on this side. Some of the Germans were killed. and No, I think that guy just got a little shirk back. But Jesus. It's a hell, it's a hell zone. How do you respond to this? The infantry, it's all, it's all chaos. Look at all the soldiers got pinned back here. The souk is being fired. Well, that tiger's down. Congratulations. I don't think it'll make for as an e epically or equally epic thumbnail. Oh, I just love seeing that train though there in that central station. You can't hate on that, that's for sure. Now they're starting to feel the heat here. Soldiers are dead back here. Train is pretty much not active anymore. Can I can I send it back? I think it would be a really good idea if you evacuated the train. If you just put that thing in reverse. Now that it's done its job. How are the defenses looking back here? Well, this Tiger and Panzer IV are still active. This pack is even active still. I mean, like with all these tanks, I don't mean to sound in any special way, but... I'm a little shocked the Allies haven't done better so far with the USO, I guess, because I know it's a really tricky spot and all, but it's probably just because it's a really tricky spot. I don't know why so many tanks went on this side. This is probably not the side, where you, the angle where you want to attack from. The German numbers are so much lesser, why don't you like try and attack up the flank here? They have a decent start here where there's no Tiger, and there's also a Panzer IV that's been disabled there. so. I don't know how that's going to work out for them, to be honest. I think the Allied War Machine says no to more foolish attempts of of something that, I guess, resembles suicide. So, let's mount up with a few more. Are these guys... I'm sure these tanks are functional. Or, yeah, what I want. It's got trouble with the tracks. Some U.S. infantry is finally starting to clear this out, though. Like, do not have lack of faith in the U.S. infantry here. Let me tell you that much. They are well beyond capable of winning this fight with the right use. They got bazookas, a lot of teams, a lot of heavy machinery or weapons. And they're starting to capture this flank. If they can work their way around here, the buildings, they'll, they'll make a quick work out of that position back there. But center is still looking pretty strong. This flank has been disabled. Infantry taking lots of fire. Some of the German infantry is even counterattacking. Some pretty nasty battling over this ridge here. We'll continue. Now, I just saw Battle of Hacksaw Ridge, or the movie Hacksaw Ridge. Pretty cool, actually. Kind of liked it. Um, well, I guess what map we are making next. So, it is there. There it isn't actually called Hacksaw Ridge. I don't know why. They call it, it's actually called something else, like the um, Maida and Barkman. I, I don't, I, I can't entirely remember what it was, but I found it in text, and it's pretty cool. Oh my, oh my! Well, this German <laughs> defense has been utterly mangled, and it's still taking lots of fire. Mortars still dropping heavy shells on them. Look at that! 
And I do think there are some tanks still combat operational. I'm going to turn on the HUD. I'm going to look at the Allied um, Army here. Let's see. What do we have? Well, you're functioning. You're just, you're just not moving. So get some troops in there. I want to make the best of the situations here for everyone involved. You need to repair your tracks. And you are fully functional too. Some of them, I think they're a little shocked. I think they might, you might even call them scared at what the Germans have done to this American attack. There's plenty of infantry nearby though, but their likelihood of, of being able to break it all the way back here where there's a Panther, more AA guns and more infantry, and even this Jagd Panzer, oh, it's a Jagd Panther. A Jagd Tiger is, um, is the bigger one, right? Um, no. It has the same... It should have the same nickname, right? Starting to doubt myself. It's the SDKFZ. Oh, of course, the Jag Tiger, Tiger is the... Ah, shit. Of course, I got it. It's the, it's the different one. It's way heavier than this. Not way heavier, but it's 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 heavier. All right, yeah. Um, got those two mixed up. Uh, look at the craters here. Pretty, pretty intense, but I think, without spoiling it, I do think that the Germans are going to hold the Americans back, to my surprise. I never thought the Americans have deployed, well, well over 50 tanks, and I've disabled any anything stays permanently, so things actually do disappear now. Uh, some tanks will disappear, lots of the bodies disappear if we do this. We just get a small small part of all all the people who have died today most of these craters and explosions do actually clear the bodies out because of the explosive damage jeez well there goes that tank are you gonna try buddy there we go nice hit did you get it no no says king tiger fires back and pretty much turns it into campbell's tomato soup Okay. Let's give it one last try with this. The hero slugger. The slugger definitely has the, the penetrating power. I'm going to direct control it. I'm going to make it a little fury moment here. We're going to ride into the hell. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Get hit by a Panzer strike. Nasty. Where did it come from? It is so cool. I want. I have a future battle idea that I think you guys are gonna like. We're not gonna employ it in this video, but I think you'll like it. It's gonna be called a persistent battlefield where we use one map, constantly changing, like a city that we can edit around and, oh, and just have like continuous battling for it. It's gonna be huge though. It has to be really, really big in order to make sense. But um, damn, damn, oh damn, oh damn. Sir, we cannot advance. I think the attack itself has definitely come to a halt. Look at the amount. I mean, there are soldiers remaining throughout this entire line. But you can tell the Germans are just very firmly holding it back here. Good good, uh, good on them. They did get the Tiger, though, which is smoking away there. And they did get a lot of the other German assets. They cleared out the entire front and almost, well, I'd say most of the second line here in the center, too. But... Jeez, what a crazy, crazy battle. So, if I'm going to calculate it exactly, the Americans deployed about 50 tanks. Um, I think, if I got all my own calculations correct. Which is a very, very, very big number. Um, the Germans had about, I guess, uh, five or six or seven in total. So, but then again, of course, it depends on positioning and quality and all. And these Tigers are some, some nasty, nasty buggers. Um, and I think the Panzer Shreks just did very, very much damage. I think the Panzer Shreks were actually responsible for most of those tank casualties, uh, especially around here. This is a this is chaos. The Allies shouldn't even have taken a third of this casualty here. They should have spread it out, and I think they would have had a greater chance if they could get more numbers out. But wow, what a battle! I hope you guys enjoyed it. You still active? No. No use. So tired of this war. And especially with this battle, I'd say. Hope you guys liked it. And if you guys want to see more crazy life, 
a house like this one, then I will gladly, gladly provide. Hope to see you guys soon again. Until next time, ciao.